President of the United States um, went on television last night after 11 o'clock, very unusual time, hastily called press conference, as you just heard from Daniel Stone at Newsweek magazine. Not a press conference, uh, it was just a, a statement delivered that Osama bin Laden, the mastermind behind the September 11th terror attacks that killed thousands of Americans, was killed in his luxury hideout in Pakistan after a, a firefight with U.S. forces. It was a pre-dawn raid. And that has ended a decade-long manhunt for Osama bin Laden. Doug Stanton is the um, author of the New York Times bestseller In Harm's Way and um, also lives in Traverse City, Michigan. He's also the author of Horse Soldiers, the extraordinary story of a band of U.S. soldiers who rode to victory in Afghanistan. He himself has been in Afghanistan. He's on the other end of our line this morning right now. Good morning, Doug. Good morning. This would be a heck of a story to write if it weren't true. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> It is. It's really, uh, it's really stunning, fascinating news. What do you make of this? Apparently it was in some uh, sort of luxury holiday town in Pakistan. They had some kind of compound with 18-foot-high walls and barbed wire, and, you know, all this business about Osama living in the cave somewhere, I guess, proved not to be true. He was right there in Pakistan. Hiding in plain sight. Yeah. Um, Near Islamabad, I think the village or the town is called Abbottabad. Um, it's uh, often on, as I talk about horse soldiers, which was about what happened in 2001, mm -hmm. people say, what do you ever think happened to Osama bin Laden? And some people closely associated with, with the book believe they were alive. No one ever told me really where he was living, um, but I'm... I'm not surprised, though, that he's living in plain sight in Pakistan, given what we know today about our relationship or Pakistan's relationship with its own intelligence service, the ISI. Um, as many of your listeners know recently, you know, we've had uh, dust-ups with them, most recently with a guy named Ray Davis, who is a CIA contractor, who in Lahore, I believe, was sitting in his white Honda Civic at a stoplight when two guys approached him who either were working or not working for the ISI, and Davis ended up shooting them both. He was arrested. He almost uh, was threatened with you know, prison, et cetera. He was finally got out of Pakistan. Um, he was in that country, as, as far as I know, from just published written reports in the public record trying to spot targets for these drone strikes. And um, at first I thought that this compound uh, in near Islamabad had been attacked by a drone strike, but when I learned that it was really a ground force of guys, it was re I realized that uh, it was a much kind of richer victory mm -hmm. because they could snap up all the intelligence that was in this compound. Mm -hmm. If they'd blown it up, that would have been one thing, but to actually go in and find laptops and so on afterwards is really quite remarkable. Uh, indeed, and to that uh, Osama uh, bin Laden went down swinging. He had apparently some sort of woman as a human shield. She's toast. He's uh, got a bullet in his head and at the bottom of the ocean right now. Um, it, it, it all happened so fast, it seems like, but the truth of the matter is they've been watching that compound, as we understand it, since last summer. Right, I, and I understand that some of the intelligence that kind of came to fruition last night actually was gotten back in 2004, 2005, mm. it, you realize how glacially slow this business can be um, of putting one and one together. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I did the program uh, from Israel a few years ago, and we met with some Israeli intelligence people, and this fellow was the, the, the retired head of the intelligence community in Israel, and he said, well, the United States is... Uh, slow moving like a giant elephant because it's so big when it comes to intelligence he said here in israel we don't have that luxury we're in a tough neighborhood and we have to we have to turn quick to survive every day <laughs> um but uh, but it seems to me from what i'm reading in reports that around the world the uh, the support for this is unanimous well, almost unanimous anyway we're hearing from places like yemen and in dearborn uh, michigan in fact there were blowing horns and celebrating yesterday that might surprise some people who uh, look at the Arab world as black and white, right? I think so, um, and I think that's good news. It's also a reminder of what President Obama's stated mission was back in December of 2010, I believe, um, which
which was to dismantle and disrupt al-Qaeda so that it cannot operate in Afghanistan. If you go back and really read uh, what he said he would go out to do concerned to that last uh, buildup of troops, it really, the, the word Taliban's not in that statement. And it's just interesting to really see this come to the news light in, in light of the fact that his drone strikes are, uh, or the United States is, are, are very effective mm -hmm. and very irritating to the Pakistanis. And um, um, the, the, the question is, though, who's now in charge of this group? That's the five hundred dollar question this yeah. morning. I don't have the answer. Um, well, uh, we talked to earlier with Professor Raymond Tanter, who said, "Sure, o Osama bin Laden will live on as a sort of a, a martyr." But uh, I wonder too, how much could he really have been doing? Th this compound had no telephone, no internet. It was a, a courier, I guess, who went back and forth, and that's the guy who eventually was the was the way they found him. Mm -hmm. Well, I, well, I was last in Afghanistan. Uh, actually, la a year ago this month, last year this month, mm -hmm. and um, one of the nightmare scenarios of people in the State Department is that uh, Afghanistan does what it's doing, and, and and we are are we leave there eventually. Um, and in the worst case scenario, things aren't as, things are worse when we leave than when we arrive in some ways. Mm -hmm. um, that is, the Taliban's back, and the Haqqani network is. Uh, firmly in place in the southeast and et cetera. So then when you talk to these State Department officials, diplomats, foreign service officers, they say, well, the nightmare scenario is that Osama bin Laden pops up and says, well, we got rid of the Soviets. The United States has left uh, this place in disarray, and not really in victory, or that's the way they would paint it. Um, and then he comes back and he says, no, I want Pakistan because it has nukes. Wow, that is a nightmare. Doug Stanton, the author of Horse Soldiers, about uh, the guys who rode to victory in Afghanistan.